Hey everyone, welcome back to another Pico CTF walkthrough. Today's problem can be found in the 2025 section called Even RSA Can Be Broken? I started by looking at the hints, which were strongly suggesting we identify a weakness about the value n. Before I explain what these numbers mean, I'm going to show you an easy way to finish the problem. Copy and run the netcat command on terminal. Then open up any browser and search RSA cipher. Use decode and start copying the values over. Copy the cipher text for the first box, then put the value of n in the third box, and then hit calculate. This should give us the flag for this level, so copy this back onto the website and hit submit. And congratulations, it works, but you have officially learned nothing. If you don't want to be embarrassed for your next interview, let me explain what these terms mean and why it's a problem. To understand RSA, let's start with a simple scenario. Imagine John wants to send a secret message to Joe. For this to work securely, Joe needs to generate two keys, a public key and a private key. The public key is shared with everyone, even John. Anyone can use it to encrypt messages meant for Joe. But once encrypted, only Joe's private key can decrypt it. Since Joe is the only one who has the private key, only he can read the message. This way, even if someone intercepts the message, they won't be able to decrypt it without Joe's private key. But a problem appears when the key pairs aren't generated securely. This is because the public key is based on two large prime numbers that are multiplied together. This product is part of what makes up the public key. Then, using a mathematical function called a modular inverse, that depends on the same two prime numbers to generate the private key. So if these two prime numbers are too small, attackers could simply try all possible combinations until they find the two original prime numbers. And once they have the two numbers, they can calculate the private key and break the encryption. That's why modern RSA uses massive prime numbers. But in our challenge, the key pairs are only 1024 bits, which makes them much easier to break with today's computing power. Now that we know a 1024 bit RSA key is not secure, let's try an example. Firstly, let's factor our value n to see which two prime numbers were used to form n by using this website I'll link in the description. From its output, we see the two prime numbers are 2 and this very large number. Oh, I think I understand why they wanted us to look closely at n. If I'm not wrong, they're all divisible by 2. Let's run the code to see if we were right. Yep, they all end with an even number making this code that generated the key extremely vulnerable, as all we have to do is just divide it by 2. But now that we have both prime numbers, let's try to compute the private key. Open up the source code that was provided to us and let's find D. That stands for private key. Copy this code back to our own script and see what values it requires. We need E, P, and Q. So we just need to get E from the source code as well. In case you're getting confused, let me write down what these abbreviations mean. P and Q are your prime numbers, and E stands for encryption exponent, and it's just a number used to help with the encryption process in RSA. It is a part of the public key and works together with the private key for decryption. And lastly, D stands for private key. I'll leave this on the side just in case. Now, back to the private key. The private key is calculated using something called an inverse function. While there's a mathematical formula behind it, I won't go into those details, just to keep things easier to follow. Once we have our private key, our next step is to decrypt the message. Let's copy the encrypted message back into our code. To decrypt it, we'll use the following formula. Raise the encrypted message to the power of our private key, then take the result modulo n, which is the product of our two prime numbers. In Python, we use the pow or power function to do this efficiently. Since characters get turned into large numbers during encryption, like how the word hello becomes one big number, we'll use the long to bytes to convert it back into readable text. Now let's run the code and there it is. That's our flag for this level. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about RSA, please leave them in the comments. But if not, I'll see you all in the next one.